break it in however you want then. Mm? Uh, mm? Uh, yep. Episode 90, Wayne in with Travis Hartman. I am B-Money, the producer. That over there is Weekend Trav. I'm a little tongue-tied because, folks, sometimes we make a little mistakes here in studio and not hit record. We're hitting record now. We were deep into the episode. It was going, it was so great. Episode 90 was money. Now it's going to be even better because we're officially recording. I wanted to give a shout out to our media partners, TH Boxing, Goldstream Financial, and IF Enterprises for sticking with us, as well as you subscribers and everyone giving us the likes, the loves, the follows. We appreciate each and every one of you, whether it's on YouTube, Rumble, or any of the audio sources for your podcast needs. You can find these episodes there, uh, We Can Travel, because this is the number one Beards, Bourbon, and Boxing podcast shot in Orlando, Florida, specifically Laureate Park, specifically in a boxing gym on the second floor of that boxing gym in the podcast studio shot on a sunday or monday however today is tuesday drops on a wednesday morning and we're going like what 14 weeks oh in the world in the world there we go <laughs> in you the know, world sorry you know, uh, sorry we're not a perfect show folks but you know we're a show nonetheless uh we can try we wanted to jump into uh local boxing there was a bit uh, there was an event uh this past saturday that we were a part of over there at the Carib Royale in Orlando, Florida. Had a few friends of the show uh, fighting on that card. Had a couple interviews this past week. Good job on those, by the way. I don't know if you folks at home uh, listened or watched to any of those, but those are good interviews uh, by Weekend Trav over there. And well produced by B Money. Well, I appreciate they don't, they don't, that. They don't see the behind the scenes stuff. You were constantly on note cards flashing me up how much time I had left. If I needed to switch subjects, because we tried, we we're on a time crunch. We were trying to keep them 20 or less. And I think we did pretty good. I think it was pretty good and well received. And I do like interviewing, especially this local talent. There's a deep talent pool here in Orlando, Florida, in the central Florida area. We'll get to that in a second. But those two guys in particular that we interviewed, that you interviewed last week, uh, coming out victorious on this card Saturday. But we wanted to jump in specifically to that. Give some love to the promotion. Give some love to the card overall. We can travel. This is Saturday night coming to you from the Carib Royale in Orlando, Florida. We did post some of that on our social media as we were there so we can trap let's run that event down a little bit shout uh give some love some shout outs what do you have to say about saturday this past saturday night at the carib royale yeah saturday july 23rd at the carib royale was promoted by gh3 promotions and box lab management yeah so we so we can trap that was uh i think our third show in a row that uh that we were at that venue um and the prior shows were i think brought on by a different, a different company, different promotion company, correct? Yeah. Bally's TV. And I think, I believe undisputed promotions did one of them. Um, I forget who the other promoter was, but they were, I think they were different though than tonight, than Saturday nights. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, listen, I know you were uh, giving a little bit of a rundown. Um, it, it didn't really, so just kind of a logistics standpoint, it kind of started a little rough for us, I guess, uh, yeah. just, even entering the building, uh, but we don't want to get into all the little it's and ins and outs. What I will say, and I think you're going to mention this quite a bit, top to bottom, the card was pretty good. Not going to lie, yeah. pretty good fights. There's probably only one fight that all of us were yawning to, and that was actually in the <laughs> the main card. Like the under yeah. undercard was pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of uh, uh, respect goes to uh, GH3 Promotions as well as the box on management, but. There's a guy who does the official matchmaking and his name is Chico Rivas. And I've known this guy probably 20 years. He works with like Warriors Boxing, works with a lot of TV, big time TV stuff, works with a lot of big time fighters. And I saw him there. So I know that he was the matchmaker. So he's very creative and he's smart and he's been around the game a long time. So I think he deserves a lot of this credit because most people don't know who the matchmakers are. They just know who the promoter is and the fighters, right? There's some behind the scenes there. And Chico Rivas, he did a very, very good job. So I think you're right. Once the fight started, I think we were very happy. I think we were entertained. And that was the cool part about it. And yes. when you go to a show, that's what you want. Mainly is you want to be entertained. You want a little 300. Are you not entertained? Run we were entertained. <laughs> and so was our whole table. So like, I was very happy. Like you said, it was a rocky start. Yep. We had a little bit of a rocky start getting there, getting through the lines, getting through all of that. But once we got to our table, our, our ringside VIP table, it was very good. 
Yes. They took care of us once we got there. Once we're at our table, I felt like we were very well taken care of. I yeah. feel like we had really good seats. And then I feel like the fights, they were really good. I mean, I'm not saying that they were, you know, the zone HBO in the past pay-per-view type, but they were very entertaining for local fights. They were entertaining. Uh, I think you're right. The matchmaking was creative. I should say uh, it's, it's probably a good word yes. for it. The venue itself. Listen, that the, the, the comp, the ballroom or whatever you want to call it. It was packed weekend trap. And, and a lot of that has to do. Yes. I understand that there's local fighters on the card and this and that, but it was packed pretty much the whole time. And, and so pretty satisfied with the show itself and, and just the, uh, the energy in the audience um you know the it gives i like the small shows because it gives the crowd and the ability to somewhat feel a little involved when you're heckling or shouting or cheering yeah. it was a pretty good vibe i think overall uh but the fights in general top to bottom pretty satisfied like you said entertained for sure uh left left the building entertained i take my hat off to the promotion it was overall it it delivered i'll be honest i thought that the matchmaking was a lot better than the previous fight we went to. And yeah. why I think that is, is because sometimes um, they don't put enough local fighters on the card. And when you don't have enough local fighters on a promotion, the crowd is not as energized because they don't know who the rest of the people are. So that's why I think the matchmaking was very, very good and well, well taken was because there was a lot of local top professional Orlando fighters that were fighting. So I think we're going to see a lot of these fighters. This is the cool thing about it, B-Money. I'm so glad that we've you know, put our money where our mouth is, so to speak, meaning we've talked about the local talent here, but we also support that local talent by buying tickets. And these kids, there's going to be a couple of these kids that are filtered out through there that are going to go on to bigger, better, nationally televised fight, pay-per-view fights, possibly world title fights. You never know. Um, and we're seeing them right now in the beginning stages of their professional career. And we were lucky enough and fortunate enough to have two of them on our show, at weighing in with Travis Harmon in our special, special channel in this corner, yep. uh, Giovanni Estella and Adrian Pinheiro, who was the co-main event. Um, so, I mean, I can go right into that right there. Uh, Giovanni fought. Giovanni ended up getting a sixth round TKO, extended his record to six and oh. Which was very or six and oh, eight and oh, I apologize, mm -hmm. eight and oh, which is very, very good. It's eight and oh, undefeated professional fighter. He said that he wants to campaign at welterweight, which is 147. So, um, I, I, I liked his fight, B Money. I think that, um, a lot of going into Giovanni's fights, they were like, he's not finishing guys and he, he needs to finish guys. And he finished this guy. Yeah. And it was yeah. very good. Like, he actually finished this guy. And I like that. I like that boxing ability that he has because he does he's very smart he's very creative he knows how to box this time he finished this kid it was very yeah. impressive i thought he, he looked very sharp in the ring um I, I think the one thing about him is that's well known is his technical ability his jab is very solid and he put that on display and wore the opponent down i think initially we're just like oh man i just wish he he would have that that killer instinct that that finishing power but it was methodic his, his approach to that fight was very methodic and it was yeah. good to see him get the finish uh in that in that sixth and final round i thought overall a solid performance coming right before his birthday i think today of all days is his yeah, birthday yeah so yeah we gotta give a shout out definitely happy birthday yeah. uh giovanni i think he's like he's young he's 21 or 22 well we can travel when you're old like us everyone's young so let's keep that in mind. <laughs> um, so that was a good solid W for for the uh, for the Orlando product, Giovanni Estella. But also we had Adrian Pinheiro, who you interviewed as well last week, uh, heading the, the doing the co-main event there. And honestly, I feel like after his victory, kind of the bubble burst in the crowd, and you kind of saw half the, half the crowd exit, feeling bad for the main event. Uh, but yeah. uh, Adrian, uh, successful first round TKO body shots dropped a guy three times in the first round not too shabby of a performance no i mean he extended his knockout streak as well he is eight and oh with eight knockouts so it's a really solid streak he's a cruiserweight so he's 200 and under he's what six three six four the guy looks the part his nickname is pretty boy for a reason adrian pretty boy pinero so um, they're, they're doing very well marketing this kid. He, he's coming along very good. I think he's 24, 25 years old. So he's right in the middle where he's taking his time. He's doing what he needs to do. 
He fought his very first co-main event, and it was very successful. Um, I know we didn't get to see a lot of him, clearly, because it was a first-round knockout. Right. But what we did see was very good. He smelled, he smelled blood in the water, and he went for, that, for the knockout, and he got it. And that's something that we talked about on the, uh, on the one-on-one interview we did with him as well. I was just like, Hey, do you go in there looking for, for knockouts? And he's like, no, he's like, if it develops, it develops. And you know, I do it, but otherwise I don't rush anything. And I think that we saw that he didn't really rush it. No, he, he did what he had to do. He took what the guy gave him and he finished him. And the guy kept giving him his midsection and it worked. Uh, there was a couple other local talents that 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 uh, got the, the victories on this card. It was pretty much all A-corner winning these fights, by the way. Um, yeah. So uh, The A-side yeah, one, yep. Yeah, Steven Galliano was on there. We had a, a kind of an up-and-coming kid that's also 2-0. Darius Jackson was on there. Yep. So a lot of local talent. I'm telling you, Orlando is rich with it. What I loved we can travel about these, these events and this event in particular is that you don't only get the guys in the ring. But you also get the guys in the stands and the and the crowd watching, supporting a lot of local talent, all kind of coming up together, uh, not feeling any of the bad blood vibes necessarily, but supporting one another. Because, listen, there's a lot of success ready to come out of the Central Florida area. So had a lot, a lot of fresh faces also in the crowd for this event, which was good to see. Um, I don't know if you if you could touch on any any folks that you saw out there as we were kind of mixing and mingling a little bit. Oh yeah, we had there were some fresh eyes, especially B Money's uh kid was there for the first time for a live yep. show. He's 14. That's a new eye. One of our other fighters, Finn, was there for that. That's some new eyes, but we also had some current pro boxers yep. from Orlando that were also there supporting. I love it when fighters support fighters. Here's the deal: you don't I know it's boxing, it's combat. You're going into combat with another person, but there's no reason why. If you're not going into combat with that person specifically on that night that you can't support them. So I thought it was really cool. Um, And what I mean by that, we had Corey Marksman, who I think is two or three and oh, as a pro, maybe four and oh, um, as a pro, he's early in his career as well. He was sitting right beside us. I seen him supporting some fighters out there. I seen him there. Also, he's fighting in a couple of weeks, I believe like uh, August 14th or 15th. I think it is. It's at Orlando live. So I Literally, we're doing this. And we're going to keep doing this. We promote local boxing in Central Florida. What a mecca that it's becoming. It really is. Like I'm, yeah. I know that I'm over-exaggerating maybe a little bit for effect, but it's becoming the mecca B-Money. We're going to fights once a month now. They're having fights there once every couple of weeks now. So the yeah, Crib Royale is doing good. And it's fun weekend trial. I mean, we're not we're not in this for for anything, you know, personally when it comes to it. We're enjoying it. We enjoy the sport. We enjoy kind of mixing and mingling a little bit with some people that we know in town. Yeah, like we or we seem to always see like Craig Duncan. He's always there. He had his table yeah, yeah. and he he yep. was working with Galeano, uh Galeano and and also he's worked with Estella a bit. I mean, so he's so he was there having a good time. We're all mixing and mingling. We see guys like Mike Sawyer with UFC Gym out in Winter Springs, Florida. We see other people. It's just it's a cool community to 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 become a part of, and we want to at least help to to elevate as much as we can from our platform uh and and kind of give a good uh platform for those fellows and those guys to kind of speak their mind and and, and kind of reach other areas as well that maybe we have uh, a foothold on but it was a very good show i think overall w- w- did you have any final thought to wrap up that or anything coming up no yeah i agree with you 100 percent too like we're supporting local boxing and here's the deal i've always preached this even before i did weighing in with travis or before we started this show together i was always a professional boxer, obviously, but I've always been a fan of boxing and anybody that promotes boxing or carries on that boxing legacy in a good way, we're right behind it. And we've all, we've been true to our word and we're supporting it. And by doing this show alone for local boxing, we're putting it out there to the masses. I mean, we have people to watch our show from England all over the place. So we're mm-hmm. putting it out there for everybody. And as long as they keep putting on good shows, we have some solid talent coming up. We will continue to promote that on our show. We'll continue to support it. I mean, our tickets aren't cheap, man. Like we go to those fights and we buy usually the most expensive seats because I personally know what it's like for fighters when they're first coming up, they're building their career, be money as a financial advisor. They're investing early to hope to pay off later, which is investment. And it's like right up your alley. You pay now 
to be better later. That's what they're doing. I mean, they're investing in their pro careers right now to hopefully cash it in big a little bit later. Yeah. I want to make it clear to those that might listen to us now. We don't get anything handed to us to do this stuff. We we go, we spend Zero. our own money. We we at this point, you know what? If if any promoters want to, you know, we're not necessarily going to shy away from that. Hey, but from this to uh, from basically at this point, we are paying uh, for our seats. We're there, we're there enjoying it, and it's awesome. Have a great time. Um, and I will say it once again. I've said this for a few weeks. Local boxing, doesn't matter if it's Central Florida, wherever you're from, wherever you're hearing my voice or seeing my beautiful face and Weekend Trav's beautiful face, support the local and talent pool. It. it doesn't have to be boxing, any combat sports, whatever else. Uh, we, we said it over and over again, having local support, going, buying the tickets, buy the t-shirts, do whatever you can to support these guys and gals. They are they are breaking their bodies in order to put on a good show, go support it. It's great. It's great to, to be in the community and be enriched that way. So definitely hundred percent support local combat sports, local boxing, local sports in general. And it makes such a massive difference to these athletes. It, and honestly, I've told people this too. I have a bunch of people that I know that are big boxing fans, but they've only watched it on TV. And I'm like, I highly recommend to go see it live. Even if it's a local show of up and comers, they're still professional athletes. I highly recommend watching boxing live. It is much different. You can hear those punches. You can see them. You see the spit fly. It's, it's just a much different atmosphere and bring a group of guys because it's fun, man. I love it. I, now I get it though. Be money. When I turned pro, there'd be so many people that came to my fights and I get it now. It's actually fun, dude. I love getting 10 people together. Cause we got a whole table. Yep. We got 10 people together. We were just having a good time at our table alone. Plus, we were getting to enjoy some really good boxing matches. So I get it. That's a cool night out for the family. It's even kid-friendly. For the most part, boxing is very kid-friendly. We've seen a bunch of younger people there as well. Your son was 14, but I've seen people even way younger than him that were yeah. actually jumping up and down supporting the boxing. So I think it's of all ages. You can go support. You're doing a good thing. You're doing something very good for a local kid who Giovanni is a very local kid. I think he's he's been in Orlando for a very long time. Um, mm -hmm. Adrian Pinheiro is, is an implant, but he's still in Orlando, Floridian now. So mm -hmm. um, you're doing a good thing and possibly you're going to catch these guys now. Catch them now before they get really big time, guys, because once they get really big time, you might not get this access to them. That's right. So speaking of big time, or at least becoming big time, we also have, we wanted to highlight a friend of ours as well of the show, Chris Billum Smith, uh, this week in July 30th, he's taking on Isaac Chamberlain. Uh, I think it's going to be televised on Sky Sports. So I doubt many folks in the States have access to that, but I'm sure there's ways to watch it. Maybe YouTube or what, what might, might have a premium channel, but he fights, I believe he's putting his cruiserweight belts, his European belts over there on the line for that. That this guy, this is the next stepping stone for him. If he plows through this fight, I think he needs to be in the conversation weekend, Trav, for one of the main belts there at that cruiserweight title class. What do you think? Uh, I think you're 100% correct. And I think that the McGuigans, who are guiding and coaching his career, they know this. And I think they're putting him in place to succeed. That's what people need to realize. Coaches and promoters, they can't win for you and they can't make you big. But a good promoter and a good coach and a good trainer will put you in the positions and give you that platform to do what you need to do. And I think they're doing that perfectly with Chris Billum Smith. They're not rushing him, but they're putting him in fights that are that are big time, but they're stepping stones to yeah. a world title. So yeah. I do think you're right. I think he's to the point now where, yes, if he cruises through this fight like we think he should, I think a world title fight is definitely in his near future, if not by the end of the year, for sure. I would be highly shocked if 2023 we did not see Chris Billum Smith vie for a world title. Yeah, you could definitely tell his skill set has sharpened the, the past couple of years. We've known him uh, through 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 the various fights that we've also seen him fight in. So he he's definitely gotten sharp uh, talent wise. As it continues to put just put so much work into his craft, uh, and it's it's great to see that. It's great to see the success of folks around us. Uh, uh, and, uh, just, it's really cool from our seats in order to see that, Not, whether it's locally or whether it's a guy like Chris out there over the pond, yeah. uh, but it's awesome to see that, but we look forward to seeing his future successes as well in that weight class. If he stays there, I'm not sure. Uh, but pay attention to that name. We've said it before, Chris Billum Smith, uh, out in England 
pay attention to that name, just like you're paying attention to our cruiserweight friend that we just referenced a few minutes ago, Adrian yep. Pinheiro. So he's, uh, I think, Boxing Rec has him as the number 20 out of 180 some odd cruiserweights officially in the U.S., very interesting stat there uh, on their part. So, uh, so he's up and coming as well. But it's great to see this weekend, Trav. I know we have a couple uh, live shows coming up in August as well. Maybe not the best time to highlight those and the details, but uh, we mentioned Corey Marksman. He's fighting at Orlando Live mm-hmm. mid-August. I believe there's another event at the Caribe Royale in Orlando. I'm not sure who's who's uh, uh, promoting that one. But there's a lot of the local Orlando Central Florida based shows coming, folks. So if you're paying attention to us, if you're listening to us and watching us. From Central Florida, keep watching because we're going to give you those details as they become, uh, as they uh, present themselves. And we'll have good links and stuff in order to try to get your tickets to those things live and also stream them live as well. We can travel. Let's go ahead and wrap this episode up. This is episode 90 of Weighing In with Travis Hartman. We're coming close to the century mark, uh, uh, Mr. Weekend Trav. So hopefully we do something special for that one, but that's in a couple yeah. of months. Um, yeah. So to wrap this up, special thanks once again to our media partners, TH Boxing, Goldstream Financial, and IF Enterprises. And once again, thank you so much to the uh, followers and subscribers of our content. Uh, we're, we have a good time doing this, ladies and gentlemen. We don't get paid to do this. We don't. We do this because we love it. We love the boxing. We love the local boxing. So if you're following along, subscribing, liking the content, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please continue to do yes. so. Um, and if you have not yet done so, hey, throw us a bone over here, huh? Yeah, we're, we're just trying to spread the joy. We're just pr- trying to spread the love of boxing because we have a huge love of combat sports and we're trying to spread that. But yeah, Be Money's right. We do this on our free time. We, we don't get paid to do this. We don't have advertisers. We have not. We do this because we genuinely love it. We buy our own tickets to the fights even because we like to support the fighters. We don't get anything free and, and we don't really we don't really care because we love it and we're trying to spread it. But you could do us a solid giving us a share, giving us a like, giving us a view. We would we would enjoy that. We would love that. We're very informative. We give you guys a lot of good stuff. Also, remember that everybody that we talked about on the show, Chris Billum Smith, I did a one-on-one interview in this corner. You can find it archived on our YouTube channel, as well as Giovanni Estella, as well as Adrian Pinheiro. Hopefully, we're just going to keep building that up. We even got one on there with um, BJ Flores, who is Jake Paul's trainer. He's on the one-on-one. We have another woman fighter. We're going to keep building that archive as well. But I just highly recommend subscribing to our YouTube channel. We're on all of the listening networks, but our YouTube channel has some special video and some special in this corner stuff. So I highly recommend subscribing to that for sure. But also... Thank you guys for listening. We really do appreciate it. I know B Money appreciates it. We can travel over here. By the way, this is a new shirt, new outfit. <laughs> I mean, listen, <laughs> listen. I'm tired. We can travel. Look at me. I've had to go back and forth to Lambo. Training camp started here for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> My man Aaron Rodgers is showing up to camp looking like Cameron Poe from Con Air. I don't know if you saw that photo. Maybe I'll I smack did. a dab like there in the video. Nicholas Cage. Yeah. So you know, it's uh, it's been it's been a real joy and a pleasure these past ninety episodes, and we're going to continue to do it, folks. And um, you know, that's all I got to say. You got any final thoughts there, uh, big fella? No, I mean we just keep reiterating, be money. We put our money where our mouth is, and we've supported local boxing. And we're <laughs> we're we, we said this. I said this at least on three or four episodes ago, where I'm trying to make American boxers great. And we want to really get behind our American fighters because we look overseas and these London and UK and all these guys, they really get behind Mexico. They really get behind their boxers. So I'm trying to encourage everybody get behind your athletes here from your country. I'm not just trying to say, Oh, those countries are not good. I'm just saying, Hey, get behind your own country. It's fun when we have huge, big, loud, boisterous crowds let's keep let's get to doing that let's get behind our athletes and let's stay behind our athletes and um we we keep supporting them and i hope you keep supporting our show because that allows us to keep on supporting them too so keep supporting local boxing support can we make, can we make, make american boxing great again Make it always great again so with that being said uh i'm gonna go ahead and put a bow on this thing okay the hand gesture is that and then that there <laughs> is Weekend Trap. That there is B Money, a.k.a. producer, a.k.a. He wears so many hats and he shouldn't wear a hat because he's got such beautiful flowing locks. But thanks a lot, B Money. You're welcome. God bless.
Easy peasy.